On one of my earlier videos, actually it was a short, I showed myself using a Buck 110 cutting some steak on a plastic cutting board. And several of you expressed some concern about the plastic that I may or may not be getting into my food. And you know what? That's kind of a thing these days. I've been seeing a lot of that on Instagram and YouTube. Plastic is not good. Now, I've known that for a while. I stopped using plastic water bottles, I drink from the tap, I have a stainless steel water vessel that I use throughout the day, and if I'm going to have something else to drink at home, I use a glass. No more plastic for me. Plastic cutting board. I can see where that would be a problem. You're scraping, you're cutting, you know, how much of that is getting into your food? I have no earthly idea. I don't even know how to test for it. I'm sure there's some sort of test. Maybe it's in your bloodstream. I Who the heck knows? I mean... Maybe you give them a stool sample and they go through and they go, huh, there's a little piece of plastic, uh, piece of plastic. I don't know. If it goes through your system, is that bad? Are you absorbing the chemicals? Is it causing me any kind of brain damage? I don't know. I know there's a few of you out there who are going to say, absolutely. I started researching the titanium cutting boards. Sounded like a good concept to me. Hypoallergenic slightly softer than steel, you're not going to destroy your knife, which is a nice thing. So I went where everybody goes to look for these things, the interweb. Thank you, Al Gore. They are pretty damn expensive. So then I went where everybody else goes for stuff that might be a little cheaper. And I bought three cutting boards thinking, this is going to solve the whole problem. I got one that was 14 by 18 and then a couple smaller ones and that makes it a very versatile group of cutting boards. Whenever my wife has a lot of garlic chopping or onion chopping or anything like that, she asks me, would you do that? And I of course say, yes, I would love to, because it's an opportunity to use knives. That's my whole freaking life. So I confidently get these titanium cutting boards out and commence to begin to start chopping some garlic. Before I tell you the results of that, I will say that I did research. Now, if you're going to be looking at these things on Amazon or whatever, and hey, before I go any further, I'm wearing these not because I think I'm cool, not because I want to be like Casey Neistat or bald and bankrupt or Jack Nicholson. I've been having an eye issue, and I'm becoming even more and more light sensitive. I've been going to the eye doctor now for three months, and I really haven't had any improvement going to another specialist. So these are prescription. I've had them for 35 years, and they're actually bifocals. If you are planning on buying some of these cutting boards, really, really, really do your research. And research, for me, also includes reading reviews and looking at the names on the reviews. Do they look legit? Do they look like a verified buyer? Do they look like they aren't a plant? Do they look like they aren't a sponsor? Do they look like they aren't being paid in any way, shape or form to say something positive? I kind of got the feeling that these were legitimate reviews. The descriptions, a lot of them, when you type in titanium cutting board, you start looking at the description, they ain't titanium, they're stainless steel. This particular one, a little more expensive, a little thicker, no mention of stainless steel, really thought it was going to be titanium. They're a little heavier than what I would expect that thickness of steel to be, so I'm still thinking they're titanium, but I'm not 100% convinced. Here they are. I will show you one of the smaller ones. You're not going to be able to see the scratches and stuff on there, which is fine. Now what I normally do when I'm completely dissatisfied with something, and I think it's a piece of crap, I throw it behind me, I launch it, it's gone, it's going in the burn barrel, it's going in the trash, headed to the landfill, I don't care, I really don't care. Because I bought them on Amazon, they're going back. I've already printed the return label, I don't want to see them. One pass on this cutting board. I didn't chop, I didn't do anything crazy, I'm mincing garlic. First cut through the garlic, I thought, God, that sounded destructive, but it's titanium. It shouldn't have destroyed my edge. 
I was wrong. I used five different knives just to make sure it wasn't my bevel, the steel, or anything like that. So, in no particular order of usage, Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter S35VN, heat treated properly, normally keeps a fantastic edge. You can chop with it, you can slice and dice and make julienne fries on a different cutting board. This area, roll the edge. You all recognize this knife, my handy dandy, everyday carry, Izula. I think I pronounced it correctly this time. S35VN, same damn thing. Ding, ding, right through the garlic. Just folded that edge over. Then I thought, okay, maybe it's an S35VN thing. Let's try another knife, custom maker, the doctor of D2, Bob Dozer, my Bob Dozer canoe knife. And no, it's not a canoe because you're gonna take it in your canoe with you. Canoe, looks like a canoe, get it? All right, one, right through the garlic, bang. Rolled the edge. Like, what the hell's, uh, what the hell's going on here? I don't know what he heat treats those things to. I'm thinking 60. When I'm sharpening them, they feel like about 60 to 61. Let's break out the 3V. So I have a Bark River 3V. This one's hard. It's done a lot of work. I have no edge issues with it until I cut through that little piece of garlic and I thought, is it the garlic? <laughs> no. So I tried onion. It's the same damn thing. It, it's not, I'm not slamming into the cutting board. Tap, roll. So then I said, you know what? There is one knife that I have that surely should be able to just cut through this fucking cutting board without any issues. The new Spyderco Rex 121. Well, guess what? Rolled the edge. These are crap. These are a scam. They are lying to you. These are not titanium. I feel sorry for anybody who doesn't like to sharpen knives all the time. You're screwed. You get out one of your nice carving knives and you go to do that, you've destroyed your knife. And if you're not handy dandy with a sharpening stone, what are you gonna do? Send it back to the manufacturer? That's not very practical. I have a cutting board that I have used since 1983 and it was a very multi-purpose cutting board. It's this, a piece of pine. So I can cut chicken, I can cut steak, I can do whatever the hell they want on this thing, and it goes into the dishwasher, it gets sanitized, everything comes out of it, and it's good to go. Best cutting board I've ever had. Please, for the love of God, do not get sucked into the titanium cutting board trend. Don't fall for it. You're gonna destroy your knives. Not only that, if you get a little bit of water underneath of them, they like to move around on your countertop, which isn't really safe when you're bearing down and you're trying to cut through, let's say, a potato, a raw potato. And what you might end up doing is taking your pinky clean off and wondering, I didn't buy red potatoes, I bought Yukon Gold. What the hell's going on here? Oh, holy shit, there's a finger. That's my finger. I'm going to the hospital. I don't want to see anybody get themselves hurt and destroy decent cutlery, even crap cutlery. These are just a bad idea. That's my cutting board story. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it, as always, and I will see you on the next one. <music>